Donnie, you okay? Is the club okay at the moment? Yeah. The internal, you know, run wins. Yeah, no. Look, we, we, you know, clearly, when you lose three games in a row, um, we're not we're not happy with how we're travelling, um, and we get another opportunity, you know, Saturday night uh, against a high quality opposition. And you know, the best the best way to deal with these things is to plough on um, and get ourselves, you know, um, back on the winnings the winners list. Just talk about government when you leave. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, no. to, to your understanding at all? No, I think I think that's been dismissed by his, his manager. Yeah, the dis disappointment he's back like that. Well, look, there's things we can control, and we'll try and control what we control. And you know, clearly, you know, we we want to make sure that the environment we've got for our players is uh, is ideal for them to perform at their best, and that's a continual work in progress. Rob Chapman said that things could have probably been done better in regards to the camp. Um, do you agree with those things? Yeah, look, we've we've obviously done a review, as we do with everything in our in our program. We review everything, and you know, we reviewed that as there were some real positive things that came out of that, and some other things which were a bit of a miss, and that's you know that's been dealt with uh, after. Uh, for a long time ago, to be honest. So Can you elaborate on those sort of things that you tried to identify? No, I mean, that's, that's an internal thing that we discussed. And, um, you know, as I said, that's nearly five months ago now, so we sort of moved on and focused on what we can now deal with, which is uh, playing and winning games at AFL footy. Would you do the camp again? Would we do it again? Yeah. Oh, we'd do it differently, yeah. yeah. In what way? What would you do different, uh, Don? Oh, probably just some of the, some of the activities we undertook and, and how that sort of worked. And um, But, yeah, as I said, we've sort of dealt with the camp, to be honest. Um, so we move on. Uh, what, can you, what can you tell us about Paddy Wilson? Nice yeah, it's a great story for Paddy coming in. You know, he's a boy from Sturt. Uh, we got him on the, the rookie list last year. Um, his form and sample has been really good. So it's great to be able to reward a guy that's been regularly, you know, getting good numbers and playing some solid footy for us. Um, you know, he's really excited about the opportunity to come in, and you know, he plays generally as a as a mid forward. So um, great for him. And great Cheney for him. As well. Cheney back, which is good. Um, but Cheney and Otto back, which is uh, which is good for us. A bit of experience. Um, Cheney's obviously had a bit of a, an interrupted season so far with injury and so forth. So to get him some form in the sample and a few weeks in the sample has been really good. Um, and we know that he can play tall and small uh, down back for us, which is good. And how close were um, Led and Lynch? Yeah, yeah, it was it was tight, um, but they were they were just a reach too far to be honest. I mean, the positive is that you know, with Laird Lynch, Brown, Sloan, we'd expect to get back, you know, or be available after the break. Um, means that we'll get we'll get some some guys back in, which uh, will be good. Um, but right now we're focused on Saturday night. We've got a side that we think is capable of going over there and, and getting the job done, so we need to do it. So there's, there's a rumour floating that uh, that Snyder was pushing. Is he, is he part of yeah, he's he probably just needs a, he needs a bit more. And, and look, given the time we've taken to get him right, um, we just don't think the risk is worth it to push him out there this week. You know, he did some training yesterday with us. Um, he was able to join in a fair bit of the session. But you know, for the chance of him going backwards, uh, it wasn't worth the risk of, of getting him out. We give him another two weeks. We really build him into that next game and um, get him set for the last half of the year. If all goes well, is he a definite for us in the fight? At this stage, we're really positive that he will be. I don't want to necessarily commit because I've, I've had a few problems when I've said I think he will be right if he's not. But at this stage, the indications are he'll be right. Yeah. How crucial is this player? You're going to get a heap of players back, heap of A graders, and sort of set yourself for the rest of the back half of the season. Well, the buy is probably less important than this Saturday night, to be honest. I mean, we've, as I said, we've lost we lost three games in a row, um, and we need we need to respond. I mean, the, the disappointing part is that in some of those losses, we've been when well, three of those losses have been in front in the last quarter, so we're not far away. You know, I know the, the external sort of rhetoric around our performances is a bit of doom and gloom, but you know, we sit at six and six, could easily be at eight and four with some, you know, some other little opportunities didn't go our way, um, and it might be different. But right now, we're at six and six, and we've got an opportunity to go to seven and six on, uh, on, on Saturday night um, with a clear plan, a clear method of how we want to go about it, um, but with a real resolve from our playing group that we're not far away. It's only a matter of, you know, 10 or 15 minutes here or there, and um, yeah, we, we we can we can get a result. John, you said it hasn't it hasn't looked like the Crows. You've mm. said that a couple of times. It yep. Looked like Does that mean some of the tweaks that you've made in the off season to the game plan and that it, it hasn't looked right? And you you go back and you change it. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily we, the tweaks we've made because we're always trying to evolve how we play. I think it, it's as much probably the, the connect. You know, not the, the continuity of some guys in terms of playing together and the way that you know that influences other things around whether it be our stoppage, whether it be our ball movement, whether it be our way to defend, um, and then their confidence from that in terms of getting results. So there's been there's been little little moments where we've been really strong. We've had some really strong wins, and there's been some other periods we've just been off. And those periods we're just off, as we've seen in the recent games, where you know against Port, um, GWS, and on the weekend against Fremantle, we just lower our level for 10 or 15 minutes and that allows the opportunity for the teams against us to score or we don't take the most of our opportunities and so some missed opportunities going forward means we, we're not getting you know, 
maybe a return for effort in terms of our, some of our ball movement um, that previously we'd had. So to me, it's a, a combination of factors um, and the game changes. So quite clearly, you know, sides are defending the game differently this year than they were last year. So we need to evolve in how we play to, to accommodate that as well. Um, and then you throw the personnel and the, the lack of continuity of some of those guys coming in and out, and, and it all adds up to a bit of a hodgepodge of year. We're, we're slightly different, certainly slightly different place than we were last year. So with that uh, ball movement, are you, or have you, encouraged now just to move the ball quicker because it seems like you've been stilted from time to time? Well, we've got a combination. At times we've gone quick, at times we've gone slower. It's, you know, again, it depends on the defence, it depends on where we win the ball back. Um, you know, historically in this league now, if you win the ball back deeper in your, forward, in your D50, it's, it's harder to move it out. I mean, teams' defensive structures are, are, are really solid. So um, that's why winning your share in the contest becomes important because it allows you to actually get and keep some field position. So, you know, they've been the things we've been focusing on. Um, and they continue to work with some new personnel on board and some younger guys who are learning playing AFL footy. Might sound a bit simple, Don, but Eddie's talked about wanting to bring the joy yeah. back to the yeah. footy. Is that missing a bit of expression? Well, I think that's I think that's one thing which comes out of a results-based industry which we're in. It's easy for us all to fall into you know losing equals. I don't feel great about you know life or myself or bits and pieces. And that's one thing you know from a coaching viewpoint, we're going to be really really positive with our players and go well. You know we're capable. We're not far away. Um, and that's a, a flow and a byproduct, but they've got to, you know, we've got to encourage that real positive attitude for them to come out and just play um, and express themselves because that's when they'll play their best footy. So we keep driving that with our guys and you can see up there this morning, it's not about, you know, doom and gloom and everyone's sitting there, you know, going, oh, what's going to happen? It's, well, let's, let's just go and play. You know, you'll play your best footy when you're instinctive and you're playing the way that you basically know is, is, your, is, your, is your strengths. Um, and we'll keep encouraging that with our players. Last couple of rounds, are you happy? Are you feeling yeah. positive? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm positive. I'm always positive because I, I look forward to games, look forward to you know, competing to win. So, you know, for us, I, I tend to take that as a bit of white noise sitting out there going, yeah, and I understand we're in a win-loss game. Uh, that's, that's the industry we're in. Um, and I'm, you know, I take, I don't like losing. Um, but I make sure that when I come back into the footy club, the environment has to be as, as strong as it can be towards, OK, that's happened. What do we learn? What can we now do about... The next opportunity, and that next opportunity comes Saturday night in a, in a big game for us. Um, and if we bring the right effort, and we bring the right intent, and we come with a plan, and we bring our, our bring our strengths as a group, uh, we'll be right in it. How far can Wilson go? Can you tell us a bit about him? Well, it's un unknown to be honest. His first game coming in, um, and we're really, you know, when we got him this year from from Sturt, as I said, we we thought he was the sort of guy who can generally find the ball. Um, he's a good user of the ball, he's a lovely kick of the ball. Um, he gets his chance and it's always exciting when you bring a, a first gamer in because sometimes you just don't know. Um, but he's ready, you know, he's, his form, his fitness is good um, and you bring a guy in in good form, well, he brings confidence as well. So um, I'll just encourage him to play. That's what you want from a first gamer. Bring your energy, bring the excitement of your first game and uh, let's see what you got. Returning to the G for the first time since uh, yep. the granny loss, what, has that been talked about? How do you approach that? No, nah, for us it's another game. We've had a pretty good record at the G, to be honest, in the last two years since I've been here. Um, I think we've lost one or two, given the grand final as well. Um, but, you know, clearly the G is a, the home of footy. It's an exciting place to play footy. It's slightly different in terms of the ground size, so we make some adjustment around what the ground size, you know, in terms of probably more width than anything else um, offers. Um, but we certainly haven't discussed anything about going back there and any worries. So no scales or anything? Nah, it's a, it's a ground. There'll be, there'll be uh, eight posts, four at each end and big green grass in between, and there'll be 18 blokes with Hawthorne jumpers and 18 blokes with Adelaide jumpers on, and we'll, we'll get to it. Oh, it's very nice and right, isn't it? You talked about the continuity and you know, players coming in and out. Mm. Do you have to be wary in the next month as you get all this group back mm. about exactly that, that they haven't been there for so long and they don't know the game? And that's, that's going to be one of the challenges. The, the magnets will look good when they're actually back and available. But the reality is for, say, Rory Sloan, he hasn't really played footy for eight or nine weeks. So the expectations are, you know, everyone will have a picture in their head of Rory at his very best. But the reality is coming back, having not played for that long, um, it'll take him a bit of a while to get going, as well as then meshing it together. The beauty is that we've got a group of guys that have played a fair bit of footy together. So that shouldn't take long to, to happen. And, and we've got some young guys who've come in and shown that they're, they're capable at the level. So, you know, we're really, really positive and, and uh, looking forward to, you know, that as well as, as I said, what we've got coming on Saturday night. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sean guys. Bergen, Sean Bergen. Sean Bergen, were you giving much attention to him? Oh, I look fantastic. I mean, 350 games of AFL footy is outstanding. Um, and for, you know, anyone. 
and I know having met Sean a couple of times, um, high quality individual and you know, obviously a great record, um, not only in terms of a player but obviously premierships and, and everything else. So you know, credit to him 350 games but um, we'll try and make life hard for him Saturday night. <laughs>